Hello. I want to discuss the 10 reasons why I've become a Republican. Number one, Republicans are pro-life. The Democrats are okay with murdering unborn children, even born children through botched abortions, are left to die or even murdered on delivery room tables or abortion room tables. This is unconscionable and all-out evil. And Democrats seem to have no problem with that. Whereas Republicans are noticing that this is unacceptable and wrong. And that's the number one reason why I'm a conservative now. I think the number two reason why is because the family values that Republicans stand for are so different than what the Democrats stand for. Democrats are for out of wedlock births, they're okay with di uh, uh, divorce, they don't seem to respect the traditional family values that make a country great, have made the U.S. great, and uh, I think that's something that we have to look at as a nation. Do we want to be a nation of families, traditional mom and dad, staying together as long as possibly can, doing their best to raise children that are respectful, or are we just going to be for loose, wild sex and no responsibility for your children. I think that Republicans have done a much better job of promoting family values. Mom and dad staying together, not mom and mom. That's a fantasy, that's not really marriage. Not dad and dad, that's not a really marriage. Uh, somebody saying that He's a girl because he feels like a girl today, or lately, he feels like a girl on the inside. That's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, I think Republicans see through that. Democrats seem to support that for some strange reason. Um, another reason why I've become a Republican or conservative is because Christianity seems to run a lot stronger in the Republican Party than it does in the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party, they seem to embrace atheism left and right. Uh, other religions which are cultish such as Islam, even though Islam is clearly pro, uh, excuse me, it's clearly anti-woman. Islam is for oppression of women. Women are second-class citizens. But somehow, liberal Democrats are still pro-Islam. That's very strange to me. Inconsistent is what it is. The rabid feminism of the left has become very emasculating towards men. It attempts to basically make women superior to men. They, can now choose to kill your child if they want. If you can't make them happy in a relationship, they can run off with your kid and stick you with the child support bill. Judges don't really respect the father's right to the child. This is, I think, a big part of the rabid feminism of the left. And the other reason why and I'm a conservative now, it's because of the fact that you know, Republicans are pro-police, pro-military. I think we need to have the rule of law enforced in our nation. Yes, there may be instances where the police haven't made the best decisions, but they're in a very difficult position. They make these decisions in a very short amount of time 
whether to arrest someone, kill someone. It's very, very difficult to make that decision in a very short amount of time. And I think for the most part, we need to give them the benefit of the doubt. Have they made mistakes? Yes. Have they done things that are clearly wrong? Yes, they have. And those are those instances are far and few between, and those officers who have clearly broken the law need to go to jail and be punished uh, for those wrong decisions. But I'm still pro-police, I'm still pro-military. I think we need to have a strong military that protects our country, including the borders. And uh, for some reason, the Democrats think that it would be okay if we did not enforce our borders. I'm here to tell you that it's very important for us to have clear, strong borders, otherwise you don't have a country. Just like our president has been saying, we've seen what's going on in Europe with their open borders policies, people streaming in who don't really care about those countries, who just want to take over, impose, in a lot of cases, Islam upon the people. And uh, we shouldn't let that happen here. I do believe that we should let in more people from Latin American countries since they are neighbors. And a lot of them are in desperate situations. I think we should let more Latinos in from those places legally, though. I don't think that we should allow people to overstay their visas, jump walls, and disrespect the borders. Uh, that we have well-defined on the north and the south. We also have laws which require you to um, update your visa or go back to your home country when your visa has expired. And I think those need to be respected. We need to know who's here, why they're here, and to make sure that they are here legally and that they follow all the laws. The sanctuary policies that Democrats here in California are championing are just atrocious. They're not keeping us safe. They're not uh, putting America first. I'm, I'm for putting America and American citizens first, unlike the Democrats and the liberals who seem to care more about other people's children, and other countries. I like what our president is doing and putting Americans first, making sure that we spend our money intelligently trying to help our own citizens. That is extremely important. And that should be the number one priority of any president or any official of our government should be to help us first. And I'll never accept government officials doing things which are in the best interest of other countries and other people. That doesn't make sense. Why would you elect someone who's going to help someone else in another country more than somebody in your own country? And I think all countries uh, should have that priority. I, mean, I don't mind that people in Vietnam or Mexico or Saudi Arabia or Uganda, they put their own people first. I want them to do that. Then we won't have to help them so much if they put their own people first. All right, so I have a uh, vested interest in um, putting Americans first. I'm an American. I think of myself as an American even before I think of myself as African American. I think that's something that we have to get away from as African Americans is focusing so much on our race and on our history, yes, we have to study our history, learn from our history, but we're living in 2018 now. A lot of things have changed. And if you look back at the history of the parties, it's actually the Republican Party that freed the slaves. It's the Democrat Party that started the KKK. Those are facts. Now, some people say the party switched. That's an opinion. That's not a fact. So I, I, I'm not so sure about that, especially when I look at what's going on in de Democrat-controlled cities. If you look at these big cities, San Francisco, Chicago, Baltimore, Los Angeles, 
Washington, D.C., Democrat-controlled cities uh, tend to be full of crime and violence. And I don't see that the Democrats have an answer to that, or maybe they even like to see minorities living in situations where they're killing each other off. And I mean, that would be a great thing for the KKK, now wouldn't it? They want to see black folks killing each other. And if these Black Lives Matter people, they don't seem to have any interest in putting an end to that. They're only interested in protesting when, you know, some black guy who's usually doing something wrong, 99 times out of 100, they're doing something wrong, something illegal, and resisting arrest, and then maybe they get killed, maybe they should have been, maybe they shouldn't have been, but they, Black Lives Matter seems only interested in defending those sorts of individuals. They're not interested in defending the poor girl in Chicago who got killed in a drive-by shooting and wasn't even involved in any kind of gang activity. Black Lives Matter never seems to criticize you know, the black gangsters. The black gangsters are the true enemies of the African-American community. To me, they are doing the KKK's job better than the KKK ever did. I mean, they use the N-word regularly. They're shooting black people left and right. I mean, they're the biggest enemy. The police are not our enemies. Police are our friends. As long as you obey the law, the police will respect you. I think that's true 99 times out of 100. The other reason why uh, I've become a conservative Republican is education. If we look at who's in control of the education system in our country, it's basically, basically Democrat controlled, liberal controlled. And what's the state of our education right now? It's not very good. We're having to bring in people from other countries who can handle the computer science, the science, the mathematics that we need to stay competitive as a nation. Uh, we're not even training our own students. We're saying things like algebra is racist. We're saying we're trying to figure out a way to lower the standards so minorities can pass these math and science classes. And I'm a math teacher myself and I don't think that we need to lower the standards. We need to raise the standards. Here in California they got rid of the high school exit exam for math and English. That was a big mistake. The exam really even wasn't that difficult. It was a 10th grade math, 10th grade English level exam and people complained about that. People thought that it was too difficult. Of course, they said it discriminated against minorities. All it is is the bigotry of low expectations. Oh, you're black or Mexican, Native American. Oh, well, you're, you're not smart enough to really pass this, so we're just going to get rid of it. And that, that was the wrong thing to do. Thinking about charter schools, I love charter schools. I love public schools, too. I love schools. But I think they need to be held to a strict high standard. Whatever your philosophy of education is, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to pass a basic standardized exam to see if you're actually teaching these students what they're supposed to know. I mean, I'm teaching students that are supposed to be in college, but they don't know their times tables. They have a high school diploma, apparently, but they can't add fractions. They can't do basic math. And they're just giving them a calculator and telling them it's okay not to be able to add and subtract. But I can tell you, as a math mathematician, you need to be able to add and subtract, multiply, divide, work with fractions, decimals, etc. If you're going to become any kind of a high-level scientist, engineer, mathematician, computer science, you need to know basic math. And for some reason, the liberal Democrats have decided that you don't need those kind of skills. They're, they're incredibly wrong, and it's, it's racism in disguise is what it is. Um, another reason I've got my list here, 
another reason why I've become a conservative is hey, uh, the Democrats have decided that we don't have free speech rights. If you're saying something that they disagree with, then they will riot, they will threaten you with violence, they will try to do everything they possibly can to keep you from expressing your perspective if it's conservative. So um, this has to stop. I think that Turning Point USA and other organizations are working hard to make sure that college students do get a chance to hear conservative opinions, liberal opinions, you know, as long as you're not coming out there saying you should kill people or oppress people, you should be able to say more or less, you know, what you feel. I mean, your opinions uh, uh, are your own and you should be able to express them whether they're conservative, liberal, or in between, or, you know, I'm okay with the uh, Green Party they want to save the trees, you know, express your opinion. I think that's perfectly okay. You're not using any profanity. You're not putting any ethnic groups down, okay, with your views. You should be able to express them. But for some reason in, in today's society, the Democrats and the liberals have decided that, you know, if you're not expressing an opinion that they approve of, you don't have a right to it. Now, that's incredibly wrong. What else can I mention here? The victim mentality that's really sucked in a lot of African Americans uh, has got to change. You know, we are one of the wealthiest peoples in the world. African Americans are very wealthy people. We're very well educated. That doesn't go for all of us, but as a whole, on average, we're very well educated and we have enough money to own businesses and progress and pull ourselves up by our bootstraps if you will I mean if you have that mentality that hey I'm gonna make it I'm gonna go out here and get myself an education I'm gonna get whatever job training I need I'm gonna get up and go to work every day you can make it this is 2018 the liberals and the Democrats seem to want to pretend that this is you know, 1918 they're they're speaking as if you know African Americans don't have full voting rights or full rights to assemble or walk down the street or eat at restaurants we've already won all those rights it's time for you to exercise them now it's not time for you to cry about the past or you know, pick on every single little story that you, where you think somebody may have been discriminated against. It's not about that. It's about going out here and applying yourself. Take advantage of, you know, what the ancestors have done for us. I mean, I thought about what Kanye West said. He said, slaves chose to be slaves. And I thought about that. And I said, well, he's right in the sense that they could have rebelled and been killed. Those were the two options they had. They could have stayed slaves or rebelled and been killed. And I was like, well, some, a lot of them did rebel and, be, <laughs> and got killed. And I can't blame them. I mean, I probably, I don't know what I would have done. That would have been a very difficult situation. At any rate, the ones who decided to endure the horrible conditions and the beatings, in a lot of ways, they're heroes because they did it for us. They did it for the generations that would come after them and for us to have a chance to flourish in this country and I, I appreciate um, you know their efforts and their sacrifice so I just hope that more people will be open to conservative values conservative values are pro-American they're pro-family okay they're pro rule of law they're very similar to a lot of the values that you know, were raised up with as children and I think that we need to return to that if we're going to prosper as a nation. So um, please subscribe and I'll have more to say about these issues and others in the future. Thank you.